All right, welcome everyone. Doug with the LincolnList.com. Guess what we're going to talk about today? Mistakes. Everybody hates to talk about mistakes, but you know what? We have to confront our mistakes in any form of life, business, personal, because if we don't correct our mistakes, we can't learn from them, we'll continue to repeat them, and we'll never grow to our fullest potential. Now, if you did see the title, it said I was going to talk about the five most common mistakes that new traders make. Now, I don't want to just isolate it to new traders because, you know, you could be in the game for a little while and you continue to make the same mistakes over again or you repeat your mistakes. And I think some of these that we'll talk about today, you're fully aware of, but you know, understanding and recognizing a mistake, then fixing it and being able to take it from a mistake or a habit once it's internalized and get rid of it is a completely different thing. So let's kind of talk about that. Now, these are in no particular order, not in a ranking. I'm just going to go through them one at a time, and then we'll go from there. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is direction. Now, there's two parts to di direction. What I mean by this first is your process, which is something we've discussed in quite a few of these whiteboards in the past. You must, especially as a new person, take the time to develop a process that fits well with you. Now, where I'm going with this is a lot of times when you're new, you're jumping from system to system, or you have something that you think is working out pretty good for you, and then when it doesn't, or you go through a period of the market where the market is conflicting with your strategy, you decide to just throw it all out and you buy some DVD that's somebody else's strategy, or you buy some red light, green light system, or you just completely do a 180. Constantly bouncing around without any direction, without any process, without a consistent formula, you're never gonna make any money because every professional trader basically does the same thing every single day because you can't trade all 4,000 stocks that are listed. There's probably more than that. You can't trade every type of financial instrument. Most professionals that's been doing this for a while, those that are successful will tell you they trade mainly two or three types of stocks and one to two types of trading patterns. That's it. You don't need to be the jack of all trades. You just need to master that one. The second part of direction is it really helps as a new person to find a mentor. Now, a mentor doesn't have to be somebody that shares the same type of strategy as you do as much as they share their feelings and thoughts and experiences with trading. Because as, and from my eyes, as I've always said in a lot of my discussions, whiteboards and everything else, Trading is, has so little to do with the strategy versus the emotional part. You know, trading is a lifestyle and having a group of people such as a trade room or a mentor to kind of carry you through some of the down times is really what's going to pay dividends later on. So that's what we're talking about direction. Big mistake that traders make is they bounce around from strategy to strategy at the very beginning of their career, not figuring out their true trader identity. And then the second part of that is not having any... I don't want to say disrespect, but you know, just ignoring the fact of how valuable trading education, how much money that's going to save you in the long run. Now, the other part, again, something I've touched on quite a few times is sizing, position sizing, okay? Now, what's really important about position sizing is I've, I've kind of made my feelings clear about this, and I think this is a huge mistake that traders make. And maybe it's that part where the instant gratification society that we're currently in keeps you from doing this correctly. What I'm going with here is that if you are not a consistent trader, meaning you're just not profitable, you can't string together three out of the four weeks every month of profitability. You can't string two to three months in a row of consistent trading profits followed by, you know, that's how a lot of traders are, right? One good month, one bad month, two good months, a really horrifying month. If you can't string together any consistency, my question to you is why on earth would you put any of your money at risk, especially while you're learning? I know what it feels like to say, hey, I got, I, I'm putting myself under pressure. I need to make money by such and such date. I'm giving myself six months. I'm giving myself a year to learn how to trade. Don't do that to yourself because it never works. If you're going to put deadlines and timelines on yourself when it comes to trading, you're probably going to be disappointed. But what I'm saying is that if you don't have that proven direction, a system that you can trust, an understanding of the market, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever under any circumstances 
that you trade with any real position size. Now, I know you think you might not make any money, but trust me, if you're not making any money now, adding size to the problem is not going to fix it. I think you understand that. My opinion, trade is lit. Hell, trade 10 shares, 20 shares. You might think it's silly, but that's how you're going to learn is through that repetition. Make sure you don't blow up your account while you're learning how to trade. And then once you figure out how to trade, then there you are with no money. I guess I can tie that into the other is patience. I got to work on my, I got to work on my penmanship here. That instant gratification that I just talked about. When you're putting, you're, you're putting restrictions on yourself. Like you say, I'm going to do this in three months or I'm going to have to go back to work. I've had a lot of people that are students and they'll come to me in the summertime and say, hey, I got three months off of school. I want to see if I can make $600,000 or six figures. It's like, no, you probably can't. If you did, it would all be luck and then you were going to end up losing it somewhere else. You have to have patience when it comes to trading. And I wouldn't just say that's trading, right? I mean, that's just life. If, you, if, you, if anybody's listened to this and you're in a relationship, right? Trading is a lot like that. You have the good times, you have the bad times. It's so exhilarating in the beginning. Then, you know, three years later, you want to kill the person, right? You're like you, one minute you look at him, you love him. The next minute you just want to, you know, trading's like that too. One minute you love it. The next minute you're, you over and over. Any business is going to be that way, but you have to have patience. It's going to take a lot of diligence. It's going to take a lot of persistence. It's going to take a lot of studying and a lot of patience for you to ultimately reach that goal that you set for yourself. So that's a big problem. Traders not having enough patience. Another one we want to touch on here is biases. Okay. Really, when you start out, you become married to stocks. You will do research or you will see a pattern and you will say to yourself, this stock has to do this. No, it does not have to do this. When you start falling in love with a stock, and you want it to be bullish or you want it to be bearish, what you're doing is you're creating emotions, which we've talked about before too. Emotions are the killer of a trader because your bias is towards that stock. What you have to understand is that when a professional trader makes a trade, win or lose, it's just business. So what you're trying to do is when you get to a loss, you're trying to look at that stock, whether it's, you're, it's a stock chart that you're doing it through technical analysis or you're trading through fundamental analysis. And you will look at that and you will say, if I saw that 10 times, I would take it all 10. That is the perfect setup. It just did not work this time. That's all there is to it. And that's what we want to be able to do as traders. You have to be able to drop your bias because sometimes, a lot of times, especially if you're going to be a day trader, you will trade the same stock in and out four or five times throughout the same day, both long and short. So you may be long Apple in the morning and short Apple in the afternoon. So you can't have a bias and make money like that. You know, the best way that you're going to be able to make money is playing both sides free of bias. And the very last piece that I would like to touch on today it's going to get some of you. Logic. Logic. You know, the stock market doesn't make any sense. No, whatsoever. It's so illogical. Is it illogical a word? I think so. But if you try, I guess what I say when I mean logic is you're trying to justify every single thing that went wrong. Like we just talked about that pattern. If you see it a few times and you say, uh, why didn't this one work? You know, wh why did this stock do that? You know, this is what the market does. It is irrational. It does not make sense. And I think the more that you try to make sense out of it, which is something we talked about of those who have a hard time trading stocks. Remember, I, I specifically mentioned people with really intelligent degrees or a high degree of intelligence, you know, doctors, lawyers, engineers, because that need to justify everything. And the market just can't can't be justified. It's just illogical a lot. Its behavior is irrational and things just happen. I mean, you see these stocks like dry ships that go from $2 to 100 or these stocks that go up 600% in a day. If there was any logic in this market, you wouldn't see stuff like that, but it happens a lot, right? You see that all the time. And as they say, the market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. So using logic or trying to justify every single thing can be devastating to you because you may never get an answer. Now, you definitely want to look at bad things and mistakes, try to fix them. You want to look at bad trades to see if there's something that you could have done better to improve, but you can't beat yourself up over it. I guess that's what I'm really trying to say with logic. 
So this is what I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it right here with a few of these. Again, there are plenty more mistakes that we can make, but over the years of me training people and, and you know, my own journey as a trader, these are some of the things that when I look back on my career when it wasn't so successful, I say, you know, what were the mistakes I was making? My mistakes were I didn't really have a process. I kept bouncing around. That was something I did a lot. I had huge position sizes. I was just married to stocks. You know, I would never let them go. I would always say, hey, you know what? It has to do this. The market has to bounce. This stock has to bounce. It has to go down. No, it doesn't. Using logic, right? That doesn't always work. So try to keep these in mind if you're struggling with any of these. You know, again, like I said at the beginning, knowing what they are, we know the mistakes we make sometimes. Correcting them, that's the tough part, right? If you need help with that, why don't you take a moment, visit the link in list.com. Until the next lesson, thanks for watching. Take care.